Hey guys, Buddy Vintage here. So just gonna do a quick video about some Vietnam uniforms and gear. I'm doing this mainly for my group to kind of give them some more info, uh, but you guys can follow along too. So I'm gonna kind of cover army gear specifically. Not gonna get in the Marine Corps a very much different thing during Vietnam, uh, a few gear variations. So this will be army. So the army, what they started with was the P-58 uniform I'm wearing now. You see the yellow and gold, and they usually had a white name patch. So they have not yet moved to the subdued. This is talking about really like 64, 65. Um, really after that, they move more into the jungle jacket. So these really become more of a utility uniform. And you can see my hot weather ball cap. Now the way you know it's Vietnam is there's two seams on it. The four seam ones are uh, really post-Vietnam, didn't come around until 71. So this is what you want if you're really trying to portray. What we're trying to do is mid-war, 67, 68. This hat would be proper. Boonie didn't come until later. Okay, so this is the utility uniform that you would have seen more prominently early Vietnam. Now, as you can see, I'm going to be angling that down there a little bit. So as you can see, mine has straight pockets, and this is more of a V shape, as well as these are flat buttons, and these are domed buttons. So this uniform really, um, again, 65, they would have moved more to this. This is a pattern 64 is what they called it. So the main thing to notice about this is that um, this really became more of a walking out uniform. Uh, things that guys would have came to Vietnam with from the US. The Jungle Jack was a very special thing designed just for Vietnam. Uh, I'm sure by the end they were still using them in the US, but there was the Vietnam issue only, just like the lightweight ruck. So when they came to Vietnam, you'd be issued your black McNamara boots in the US with the sole that resembles very closely to World War II. So black leather, utility uniform. Pretty much right off the plane, you'd be getting a jungle jacket and jungle boots, hopefully sooner than later, because we know this is not great for jungles. The breathable and lightweight jungle boot is uh, for the water wicking. So that's utility uniform. So what do you want to come to Vietnam in? And again, this is the utility pants. Again, it's flat pocket, surprisingly enough. Kept that. And these two large cargo pockets in the front. Now, there is no side pockets like the jungle uniform. And that was usually worn tucked in as well. So, what did they wear into combat? They would have worn the jungle jacket, really coming out in 66. This is a first pattern. Uh, this is a repro FY. You can tell it's a first pattern because the exposed buttons, dead giveaway. Now, anybody that has been crawling around on the ground with exposed buttons, these do rip off. I uh, believe that was the main reason why they were replaced. They have epaulets and they have these little cinches on the side as well to give you a smarter look. So still full color. So this would have been really 66. You would have really seen still full color. This is 173rd Airborne patch on the top, separate, full color. Uh, U.S. Army now, you were now seeing a transition, not a full transition, a transition start to the Olive Drought Subdued. You have your uh, jump wings there and your combat infantry badge as well, uh, assuming you would have been in combat uh, pretty soon in country and receiving this badge at some point. And you still have the white name tape. So, great. Obviously, you can see why this was not where they eventually went to subdued. This is much obvious in the jungle. Now, the pants themselves. Really, the only difference between later pants are the, again, exposed buttons and these leg tapes as well. That would do like the World War II paratrooper style, tie around your legs to keep your load from running around uh, or buckling around in your pocket. They also had waist tab fasteners as well. These were still made from a cotton poplin. So as you can see, it's a straight cotton, 
no ripstop yet because ripstop you can see the nice little lines in it for that ripstop reinforcement and then they came to I do not have a second pattern but this is then the third pattern I'm being very generic now third pattern I'm gonna move back a bit so you can see the whole thing third pattern very simplified no more epaulettes no more exposed buttons no waist uh, tab the second pattern did still remain the epaulettes and the waist tabs that was around 66 67. Now, 67 onwards you'd be seeing these okay the exact design you see here yes there are very specific there's a um a what's it called a pen hole here based on how many pen holes they have and the drainage um, holes at the bottom or not here that would vary on very little minute differences and updates I'm not going to get into those today go to vietnamwargear.com okay so you'd have this again cotton poplin still now you can see how easy it is to rip and you can only imagine the jungle this is wet all the time it rips it's this cotton wind resistant poplin it says that on the instructions this is Coat Man's Combat Tropical. These were never called jungle jackets. They're called Combat Tropical Coat. So, this is a repro pair, a little bit more green, uh, still cotton poplin. The pants now received a closed button pocket. No more waist tabs. The second pattern still had waist tabs. The third pattern, they went away with those. And you had your tightening cinches on all the pants at the bottom uh, to go around your jungle boots. So let's talk about the jungle boots. Okay. First up, got rations down there. So you had the jungle boot, Vibram sole. The Vibram sole is this directional arrow and nice little ridges all the way around and all the way to the back usually made by Rose Search or RO Search or CIC or a bunch of different manufacturers out there. Uh, now, the early patterns did not have this reinforcement here. They, the first pattern boot did not have those. So these are the pair with the reinforcement. This is what you want for the 67, 68 impression that we will be doing. So get yourself a pair of these. Vibram Soul were only really made until 1968. Started in 65. There are some 64 dated and possibly 63 first patterns. Before that, there was an Okinawa boot or the uh, black McNamara boot that we saw. Okinawa boot, Google it. Um, interesting design. Okay, so in studies, these were really not grippy enough in that mud. So in 68, they came out with the Panama sole. Uh, big clunky lug sole much better in mud, does not cake in between like it would have on the other design called Panama Soul because they were tested in Panama. Again, same reinforcement from the side, they look generically the same. These are much more affordable and ready to destroy. They were made up into the 80s. Uh, so pick yourself up a pair of these. Who's gonna look at the bottom of your boots? Not me. Uh, if you wanna ruin originals or get good repros, uh, you can do that. Okay, so those are the boots. Now let's get into um, what they would have carried. <clears throat> so, this is a lightweight rug. And I'm going to reposition this just a tad to get a better angle on this. This is a lightweight ruck. So, it's very covered right now, so I'll give you an example of one that's a little bit more exposed. Like this. Rucksack. Two straps, really, for the closure, and a tightening closure. Three large pouches at the front. Each of them at space down here for you being able to put through a shovel or machete, things like that for storage. 
great. You see the carbiner, which you'd see on the webbing as well, that can be used for extra water bottles. There's a water bottle securing tab and Alice clips, as well as M1910 clips as well on each side. A lot of guys just hang water bottles off anywhere. These perfectly fit a ration box as well. And on the back, you have your uh, shoulder straps. Uh, one was a quick release. I do not have one because they're crazy expensive. And your jungle towel that you may have used as a, um, a back pad. The US style just only had kind of one end, not these all these fancy lines uh, that some other patterns have. That being said, get yourself a jungle towel. Uh, really useful in every situation. Great. Nylon, lightweight, dries quick. Put anything you want in there. So let's see what we have. So I have machete, the securing tabs on the back here, which I'll show you on this design. What it's open to. Yeah, securing tabs right there for M1910 hook. Not a lot you can put on there except the machete. I guess you can put a, a, the old water bottle. You can really put Alice clips anywhere you want. These also came off to help you uh, fix it. And you also had cargo straps, center cargo strap and two side cargo straps. I have mine in the upper position. So I put my cargo straps on the bottom. This is what we call the mid carry or high carry. So you could keep stuff on the bottom. This one over here is your low carry, what you would have started the war with. This is ideal for our impression. Poncho, not required at all, but pneumatic air mattress. Uh, again, comfy for sleeping, great, but more for water crossings, putting gear, rifles, equipment on. Poncho, essential piece of sleeping and rain kit. Not really worn in the Vietnam War, but used as a shelter. This is a lightweight shelter half, is really what they used it for, and waterproof, which you would need in Vietnam. And the poncho liner, which you see in behind here. This one, all the um, little ropes have been cut. There's little laces that usually you can actually affix it into the poncho, poncho liner, poncho, and fold it into a sleeping bag. A lot of guys prefer to use this more as a lightweight blanket and this as your shelter from the rain over your foxhole or wherever you were set up. Great. And as you can see, these all have M1910 or Alice clip holders everywhere. Perfect. Uh, also, I have a later war, not really proper for our impression, but um, two quart canteen. These really came on 68 more of a late war thing. But what you ideally want is the M56 canvas with the Alice clips on the back. And when I say Alice clips, I mean this type of clip, that little slider guy, that's an Alice clip. Rather than the hooks, which would be more of an M1910, which I thought I had one here to show you guys. And I do. That's an M1910 hook really phased out after the 1956 gear. This is 57, probably the last year you'll see anything with an M1910 hook, uh, mostly. Great. So, that is the lightweight ruck. Now you're gonna say to me, Doug, lightweight rucks, crazy expensive. Agree. That is why it is okay if you have a butt pack. These were the only used early war when I say that, I mean 65, 66. By 67, they're realizing they're spending a month in the field. This does not hold a month worth of stuff. This was meant for quick patrols of bases and things like that. I'm gonna bring you back up to my eye level now. Let's do a little chat. These, again, on the back of your belt, M1910 hooks, the M56 suspenders clipped in the back. You had extra at the bottom to hook on a poncho uh, roll underneath, inner two securing um, uh, webbing straps, and you had eyelets to put on something, uh, usually maybe a bayonet, and in here 
you have slots to put uh, Alice clips as well if you were to put something else on there, such as a canteen. So that's okay. Now, they were also rubber lined. Now rather than getting into piece by piece, I'm going to show you a full kit set up here. I'll start at the back. Apologize about all the angles here, it really changes a lot, you know? Okay, as I change the lighting. Okay, so let's take a look at what we have here. So we have the M56 belt setup. This is the belt setup that you would have when carrying a lightweight ruck. You can tell that because you cannot fit a butt pack under a lightweight ruck. You can if you really try, but there's not a lot of reason for it. So if you were to hook this on, you hook it on and you hook these two clips to the two clips on your butt pack instead of your belt. So these suspenders are called H suspenders. You can tell because they have four pieces. They make an H when laid out and they're just all made from cotton webbing. Your canteen cover, same thing cotton with the Alice clips on the back. Usually brass snaps. They did have some plastic ones in your plastic water bottle. Date on the bottom. I'm using more modern ones, 2003, making sure that I can still drink out of them nicely. No NBC hoods, so, uh, sorry, caps. I need the caps that you can drink out of the gas mask with, those little Things for your straws, they have little rubber nipples on there. No good for what we're doing. Those are really late war and really post-war. By the time they started using them, they did have different variations. So they had some here, you can't really see it with nylon uh, edging, some with cotton. Uh, cotton obviously being the earlier one. Then you have your uh, M56 universal ammo pouch. Put anything you want in there, but it was mainly mags. You fit three to four mags sideways. Uh, they were originally designed for the M14, so these are a little bit short. So this guy's threw um, socks in there, things like that. You can do the same. Early ones had a metal tab or eyelet. Later ones did not. And earlier ones were reinforced at the back. Later ones were not. So they would keep their form a little bit better. And these are also clipped in. I'll show you at the front. Clipped in to your suspender here and the back of your suspender just goes behind and clips onto your belt okay and you can just play with those to get it the right length carbiner for carrying anything you may want uh, grenade fasteners for grenades or um, gas or smoke and compass and first aid pouch so what do I mean by that I mean you can have your compass in there that one is Korean War, no, 1966 dated, Vietnam Compass. Really, only a squad leader would have that. And um, first aid pouch, this one is 72 dated with the old drafts, kind of post-war. The wartime ones would really have more of a, this clear look. Um, that one's actually 71 dated same thing those would usually have you know the the all of drop tourniquets in there great so that's pretty much it for that and gear there's a few other pieces that you can actually you know i'll keep this up to kind of show off the pieces so these other pieces what do i mean your flashlight mx 991 um, slash you underwater is what it means light under here would be your different colors you can put it if you're using it at night and what's lovely about this yes you can look cool by hooking that on there uh, some guys did uh, flashlights weren't always used last thing you want to do in the dark in the jungle is let your location known Charlie owns the night okay what else do we got Rations. These are B units. They came in the larger ration box. Um, see, that's in there. What the hell is that spider web? 
So they came in the larger ration box, um, crackers, candy, your bread unit, your M unit was the meat unit, uh, D unit was your dessert unit uh, as well. And you'd have those little ration spoons. I can go grab one, uh, or maybe I have one in the helmet. When I say helmets, the classic M1 helmet. This one's done up 173rd. This is ideally what you want because it has, let me undo this, the para chin strap, which would be ideal for 67 by 68. Other than Operation Junction City, they're realizing they're not jumping out of planes more. They don't really care as much. But that liner is called an M1C paratrooper liner. And that's because it has got these A yokes here. And it's also got this extra button to clip in your chin strap if they are paratroopers chin straps as well. Okay. And this is the uh, pattern 64 or pattern 65. I'm getting my patterns mixed up. Um, liner with the cross, there's no oval in the middle like there or circle in the middle like there is with the earlier ones. Um, and the camouflage band, uh, really you don't see a lot of things in the band early war. Uh, I just have a pack of uh, damp proof matches there and you may see some slight graffiti. There's some faint stuff on there, nothing too crazy early war. Uh, they're still thinking about patriotism and not as being as expressive about their views on the war. Um, this one has the M1944 dust goggles. Really only going to use that if you're uh, part of a armored vehicle team uh, or a helicopter kind of dust off uh, team as well. Okay, you got your ration cigarettes. They're a little bit smaller, damp proof matches, uh, nothing crazy. And one without the, uh, the band. Uh, sometimes you'd see that, especially early war. Uh, Marines used a rubber band. I won't get into that. And then um, an earlier Korean War type with the, uh, the circle fastener or the circle tightener to see the depth of the, hel um, the helmet that's worn on you with this nape. Whereas the earlier ones got this nape. And that keeps them sliding off your head when you're wearing it and you lean forward, it doesn't fall off. It doesn't really sit that nicely uh, when you put it on. You gotta, gotta be prepared for it. A lot of guys end up removing it like I have in mind, so it's quick on, quick off. Okay, a few other things. I'm just gonna cover quickly, trouser belt, uh, brass closure, pretty common. You can find on most belts today. Uh, it says solid brass, usually made in the USA. Black, regular canvas belt with black and brass tip. That's what you want for your belt. Extra accessories, uh, LSA oil, cleaning toothbrush for the M60. Uh, you'd have a um, rifle cleaning kit for your M16, obviously. What else we got? Important little tool, your um, pocket knife. This one usually had screwdriver, can opener, knife, and this little hole puncher as well. The next most important thing that will go on your dog tags usually is your pre-38 can opener. Yes, they had P-51s by now, but this was still came with every ration. Get one of these. They're cheap. You can find them everywhere. Um, the repro ones don't work as well as the originals, and they're only a few dollars. So go pick one up. Put them on your dog tags. Zippo. You can date a Zippo from the bottom based on the dots and slashes on it. Uh, if it has uh, new Roman numerals, or numbers, definitely post-Vietnam, but the slashes and dots, look it up on zippo.com, you're good to go. Bayonet for your M16. The M7 bayonet, usually made by Conetta or uh, this one's made by BOC. I think Boston Ordnance something, I might be wrong. Um, really what everybody got hooked on. You can also hook it onto a belt as well. And your jungle machete. Really? Most of the war, they use the design, this cotton duck, hardened cotton duck that came out really in 45. They used up to 66 until they went to the other pattern, which was the um, plastic sheath that you see here. The sharpening edge. Got a World War II type in there. 
Sorry guys, put my stuff down on other things here. This one is a uh, Vietnam era. You can tell because US and Ontario are uh, perpendicular to, it, to each other. When they became parallel, that was post-war, post-Vietnam. But if you want to be safe, this one's dated, I think, 40, 44 on the bottom. 44 there. True temper. Okay. That's pretty much it, guys. Sweating like a hog here in the basement. Uh, I hope that helped uh, a bit. So I'm going to give you a quick last-second rundown. Hope you're drinking beers. Having a good night. Um, the rundown is required uniform. Third patent pattern. Cotton poplin, not ripstop. Ripstop's much easier to find, much more affordable. Rothko makes them. That's all you can find. That's acceptable. Really, you're only going to be able to tell if you get close. Um, and this kind of green, you can see it matches my original uniform. That uniform, cotton poplin, repros for more. Um, Soldier of Fortune or some other, you know, Papasan's uh, Supply Depot can help. That is what you want. No exposed buttons, no epaulets, no fastening tabs. The second pattern from What Price Glory with the fastening tabs and the epaulets are acceptable uh, for 67, 68. You'd still maybe see a few of those around, but this one covers really 67 all the way to 71 or 70. Great. M56 gear required uh, with two universal pouches, two canteens, three is ideal or more, and at least one first aid that you can also put up here if you'd like. Carbiners, extra bonus for carrying stuff, um, plastic canteens, if you have a grenade or uh, some smoke, bonus, uh, that's great. Next, jungle boots with the reinforcement. Panama sole, acceptable. Vibram sole, even better. But we know that's not always realistic. Great. Uh, make sure you get the regular or wides. Narrows, unless you actually have a really narrow feet, the narrows are really narrow. Great. Butt pack. Some guys might need to start with this if you do not have another high capacity way to carry gear. Uh, if not, this would have been acceptable because you would have dropped your lightweight rucksack to maybe do a perimeter check anyways. M51 shovel, not required, uh, but you want to dig a hole somehow, right? Uh, M60 gunner, or these gunners assistant would probably have that. Good idea to have a flashlight. Why not? They're cheap. Period rations, bonus. And that is really it. Um, that's what you need. You need jungle jacket, third pattern. Jungle boots, Panama. Yeah, I know everybody's gonna be Panama. Why are you, why are you, Panama's not right. They only came in 68, they're all from the 70s. Yes, but let's be realist, people. Um, Vibrams, hard to come by and repros are expensive. I'm trying to get people into the hobby. Uh, you can always get Panama's, oh, sorry, uh, Vibrams later. M56 webbing, okay? And M1 helmet, paratrooper liner, not required. These are the things you need to get started. And of course, a loadout uh, weapon. Uh, M16A1, uh, M14, very early war, but really the M16A1 is your bread and butter um, with or without the, um, the um, assist, whatever that's called. Um, M79 grenade launcher, great. M60, uh, I have one. Uh, somebody has one, great. Um, other than that, uh, grenades and other small ordnance, wonderful. And the other little accoutrements, pocket knives, matches, ration cigarettes, rations, small things like that. Uh, GI towels make all the difference. The other thing that I will say, ponchos. Very affordable still, 50 bucks. Get one, great shelter, uh, great thing to put down uh, or put above you, one or the other. Poncho liner, a bit more expensive. Uh, you see this one's even faded. Uh, don't get the woodland ones, they're not correct. This is an ERDL pattern. This ERDL, that would have looked like this at one point. This is really what they started using um, 
BAC 70, 71, uh, 69. And uh, the 173rd would have been using these towards the end of the war. They were there up till 71. This would have been worn at, wearing at the end. And I guess just to mention last but not least, name tapes. All of drab, really, for what we're doing. You don't go full color unless we're doing something specific. Uh, it's okay if you do have the badging, though. Um, there is slant and there is straight. Okay? So straight is the acceptable way to do it kind of early mid-war. Slant is really 68-69 right to the end of the war. Uh, you see this a lot because those are the jackets that survived. Uh, this is more the way to do it, straight across. Kind of starting around the edge of that pocket. And then same thing with your name on the other side in OD as well. Full color, okay, if there's a transitional ways to do it. These ones can be full color if need be. Uh, olive drab also acceptable, uh, but especially 67, 68, you still see these full colors. The guys are pretty proud to still wear the colors, whereas the US Army and others insignia became progressively more olive drab. Okay, know that was a long video, guys. Uh, thanks for your patience, and everybody have a great night.